in this docker episode we will be focusing on the core docker concepts these core doc docker concepts i would say underpins any kind of docker tutorials that follows so we need to have a solid understanding of these concepts and these are fundamental building blocks in docker technology so as a beginner where do i start or which building block do i focus on so we will be starting with defining what a docker image is docker image is a lightweight executable package that contains all the dependencies put together to run an application let me just annotate that and explain this so so the docker image here this is a package this contains the application binaries third party libraries any runtime required for the application and configuration artifacts so all these things put together form the docker image you could think of docker image as a template or a um or a blueprint which is used to create application or which is used to create or run an application so with the docker image we could create containers or container instances what it means a container is a running instance of our application so let me just draw an analogy in uh, for a software developer or a programmer uh, a docker image is like a class and an object is like a container for a infrastructure person a virtual machine image is like a docker image and uh, which is used to create virtual machines vms okay let's go to the next definition so let's say bob is a developer and he is new to docker what is the first thing that he does to understand or learn or he wants to have a hands on of what is happening within the docker world so he is going to install something called a docker desktop so docker desktop is available for windows it is available for um, mac and it is available for ubuntu ubuntu desktop okay and for uh normal linux uh, uh kind of command line kind of a stuff we have a normal uh docker downloadable we could just install using apt-get or uh using the rpm we could install it so when you install docker desktop or docker on the workstation or laptop what are the things we get we get what you call a docker daemon and we get something called docker engine and uh, we have the third component called as docker client so the docker daemon and docker engine we will talk in more detail in subsequent videos but as far as uh, this uh, uh, video goes our focus will be on the docker client so using the docker client we could issue different commands through the command line interface uh, to 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 do multiple things like uh, creating a or building a docker image creating containers container instances um, pushing the docker image pulling a docker image so all those things you, we could do using the command line interface so as a developer bob he is going to install the docker desktop on his laptop that's the first thing that he does so once uh, bob has installed this what is the next thing that he is going to do let's see that so bob now is interested to create a docker image so how does he do that so first thing that he does is he creates a docker file docker file is a plain text file which contains different instructions that says these are the dependencies that are required these are the runtime that's required these are the application binaries and um, uh, this is the configuration artifact so all those dependent pieces of information will be provided as instructions within the docker file and using the docker command line tools like 
docker build docker build bob can create a docker image in his local repository so what do you mean by a local repository i will come back in a separate video but just think that it is on the same machine where we are running the uh you know the docker desktop so now uh bob has built the docker image using the cli and the docker file so now for a docker image we need to understand uh, certain things like every docker image has got a name and has got a corresponding version so which means that uh, whenever whenever there is a change request that comes to the application the docker file undergoes some changes or the underlying binaries undergo the changes or the dependencies might undergo some changes and because of which a new new version of the docker image will get created so which, which means that it will have the same name but it will have a different version awesome so let's just talk about the next concept docker registry now bob has um Bob has built the Docker image. It is in his local repository, right? And now, when it is in his local repository, he cannot share it, share it with any other uh, of you know anyone of his uh, peers or to any other team uh, within the organization. So Bob has to push it to a centralized repository. So Bob is going to use a, a command called as Docker push. Again, this this he uses the Docker client. Uh, the CLI command line interface to push this Docker image into the Docker registry. So Docker registry you can think of as a repository that manages the Docker images. And Docker Hub is one such repository uh, which is free, which is public. And there are a lot of official Docker images sitting inside the Docker Hub like Apache, uh, MySQL, you can think of this. There's a lot of Docker images there. So we will be using the Docker Hub extensively in all our tutorials. So once we have learned what is a Docker registry, then let's understand how all these things work. So we looked at what is a Docker image. We looked at what is a container, uh, what is a Docker desktop, uh, how do you, or, or what is, or what do you mean by building a Docker image? docker file uh, then we looked at docker registry so we will try to put all these things together from a software development and deployment perspective so uh, the development team let me just uh, name a person let's let's have bob in the dev team okay um bob is first of all going to how all these things work so uh, bob is going to first install the docker desktop on his laptop okay so once he has installed it he can spin up let's say uh, let's say if he has got to work with uh, node.js and he has got redis and he has got um, what are the other components let's say mongodb so he could you he could spin up the redis and mongodb and he need not have it installed on top of the operating system but he could just deploy the mongodb and redis and node.js as well you allow you can have it as a container so everything is deployed as a container and uh, bob will be working on those containers and once he has engineered the solution everything works everything is tested bob is going to build an image a docker image and he's going to use the docker cli to build the docker image and once bob has built the docker image and is available in his local machine he's going to use the docker push to push the uh, the the image from the local repository to docker hub or a private docker registry so once it is pushed into the docker hub or any other uh, docker registry other teams like the operations team will have access to uh, those images. So on the day of the change implementation, the ops team is going to uh, pull those Docker images. It happens all this, uh, uh, you know, deploying the workload and pulling the images. It happens in one shot, but I've given it as a separate five or six, but it just happens as one single shot using the Kubernetes cluster. So the Kubernetes cluster has got all the required intelligence uh, 
with the necessary configuration we provide, um, you know, the deployment and other configuration that we provide to the Kubernetes. Kubernetes cluster has got that intelligence to pull the Docker uh, images from the Docker Hub or any other registry, and it will deploy that as a workload as one or more parts. So this is not a Kubernetes uh, discussion or it's not a Kubernetes video. I will have separate set of videos around Kubernetes, but pretty much at a high level, this is how it works. So at any point of time, let's say if, uh, uh, let's say a Docker image or image is working properly, and that is a new change that has to get introduced into the Kubernetes cluster, so the operations team uh, will be uh, will be using the new image. Let's say version 1.0 is currently deployed in prod and version 1.1 is the change that's going to get deployed. If in case the version 1.1 has got an issue, the team is going to roll back to the version 1.0. They're going to pull the Docker image from the Docker Hub or any other uh, Docker registry. So the rollback itself is pretty seamless. The deployment is seamless and all the challenges around the library compatibility issue is completely addressed uh, when uh, using the Docker technology. Pretty much I think we have connected all the dots together. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feedback, please drop in in the comment section below. If you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing so that you get more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will catch you in another uh, Docker episode.